warm welcome to Miss Iraq 2017, Sarah Izzani. Good evening. I want to start by thanking the Israeli consulate for inviting me to speak. I am deeply honored to mark this commemoration with you all tonight. As you have just heard, I am Ms. Iraq, and I took this selfie with Ms. Israel that caused a media firestorm all over the world. That's really all you need to know about me for now. Because what's important tonight is honoring those Jews across Arab lands who lost their possessions, their homes, in some cases, even their lives. All for the sake of preserving their faith, their beliefs, and their identity. I come from Baghdad, but my family come from Babylon, the historical homeland of hundreds of thousands of Hebrews and the source of Judaism's most important legal text, the Babylonian Talmud. Growing up, our grandparents told us that the Iraqi Jews played a pivotal role in the development of our country. From advancing science and business to creating beautiful music, art and jewelry, to importing the best abaya fabrics, the examples are endless. But most importantly, we were taught that Iraqi Jews had such good hearts, that they were extremely educated, respected, and loved. That beautiful chapter of our history was erased when the Jews were expelled from their homeland. For centuries, Iraq was known as the cradle of civilization. It used to be a home for people with different religious beliefs. It used to be a beacon of diversity, but no longer. So what really has, ha has changed? The Danish theologist Søren Kierkegaard once said, people demand f freedom of speech as a compensation for the freedom of thought which they seldom use. I think these words sum up what happened to Iraq. From the Persian and Ottoman empires, through the English and American invasions, the Iraqi people always demanded freedom. But even though the invasions have ended, and even though Iraqis have always fought back and won in battlefields, Iraq has never been truly free. Not for a day. Do you know why? Because Iraqis defined freedom as getting rid of the foreigners who are taking their oil. But they turned a blind eye to the real problem, the, the corruption of their own self-serving governments. <laughs> governments that deceive them into forgetting that their strength derives from their unity. Governments that kept control by teaching them the importance of defending their country against invasion, but not, def not of defending their fellow countrymen from prosecution. The hard truth is that we, Iraqis, have no one to blame but ourselves. Despite what many choose to believe, that to be the cause of the dire state of Iraq today, from the killing and terrorism to the lack of basic human rights isn't really the fault of United States or George Bush. It is the Iraqi people's fault. It is the result of our own actions or lack of. When we allowed our government to dread, to dread on the rights of specific ethnic and religious groups among our own people, when we allow our rulers to abuse their power, it is only a matter of time before the rest of us face the same injustice and cruelty. Ever since the Iranian regime has increased its influence in Iraq, 
ever since our government has been pushing us to embrace an oppressive Islamist ideology. Many Iraqis seem to be unaware of the fact that Iraq wasn't founded as a Muslim country, that it became a Muslim country by force. A year ago, my moral values were put to test when my own country, along with other Arab nations, attacked me for making a friend from people they deem an enemy. But today, as I see the impact of that simple gesture and the huge amount of support I received, especially from my Jewish friends, I realize that I may be able to contribute to the cause of re-establishing relations between Muslims and Jews in between Iraqis and Israelis, which is why I founded Humanity Forward, a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to rebuilding the bridges that the Iraqi government has burned. We're starting our initiative by introducing Iraqis and Arabs to, world, to a world of education through YouTube channels that cover important subjects, uh, subjects from history to politics, to religion and psychology, piecing everything together for them so they can see why Muslims and Jews shouldn't be at war. Secondly, we plan to work with, our, with other Jewish and Israeli organizations, such as Save a Child's Heart and Flying Aid, who will help the Iraqi people and show them why they shouldn't believe the ugly picture of Israel painted by the Arab media. With the support of my team at Humanity Forward, my wonderful colleagues and friends, Nate Miller and Michelle Moray, and with your support as well, I believe we can achieve an unprecedented progress toward peace and reuniting two nations and two religions. Together, we may go forward to better days. Thank you and have a good Thank you.